here comes the match that I wanted to see. Ugh, I threw that paper in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Recycle that. I'll try. I've still got. I'm still got. I'm starting to say I've still got paper in my mouth. That's not what I, what I said it was. <laughs> This is the match I wanted to see, the next match, but it was on halfway through the program. I'm thinking, this is not the main event. For the NXT UK Championship, Valter versus Tommaso Ciampa. Let me just spend a little time on this. For all the people who say I don't like anything, and then, of course, nobody will pay any attention to this anyway. But once again, it's not hard to see what professional wrestling is supposed to look like when there's actually once in a while still doing it. And these guys did it. This was the best professional wrestling match I have seen from any company in months and months and months. And honestly, going back to Walter, Walter and Elia, um, which was memorable also, but a completely different style of match here. That was more... Strong style, this was more guys working and working snug. But both these guys have great entrances. They have a presence. They look like stars. Their Champa's gear looks good. Valter's lack of gear really looks good because that he looks like that fucking square-jawed SS officer in a fucking Nazi war movie. They walk like they're serious. And Champa is in incredible shape. Uh, I mean, just, you, we've talked about some of the injuries he's had in his career, major neck surgery, major knee surgeries. Um, he's the dedication that he had. If, if Tommaso Champa was a serial killer, we'd all be in trouble because the determination that he has is fucking frightening to come back from injuries, to keep himself in shape, to do what he wants to do, whatever. But that you could have sold his look in any era. And the same with Valter. Um, I've mentioned Hans Schmidt earlier. Valter is a 21st century update of Hans Schmidt in, in concept, an evil foreign German menace. But he's he works like a modern guy you know they didn't work like that in 1953 but it's the same concept and the same image um and uh, again champa you know you you could have put either one of these guys on starcade 86 and they could have had this match in front of a crockett crowd at that time period and it was still torn the house down i mean can can because I was sitting, when I went back and watched this again, after it was done, I watched the match again, uh, which was good because there wasn't anything else on the show I wanted to see. Imagine them being in Florida, 1978, or the Omni in 1986, or wh- in, in having this match, people would, it, would have still gotten over And you can't say that about almost any other match. If you took most modern matches and you put them in front of those crowds in those environments at that time period, they would have booed the fucking thing out of the building. I mean, do you disagree? Not to whether the match is good for people to watch it now or not, but most it would have fit in modern matches would be booed out of the building. If they took place in the territories, in the eighties, whereas this would have fit. I think this would have fit. Yes. You're not going to say most modern matches would be booed. Because you're causing me to have to stop and think about all the modern matches. And, I mean, I'm sure there are modern matches that work, that would work this, in those this time This being periods. one of them, yes, but yeah. as said most. Most. I mean, yeah. Put, and- put Luchasaurus out in, in the Charlotte Coliseum in 1986 and tell me people wouldn't be laughing at him. Yeah, I think they would be. Okay, all right. Anyway, I love the in-ring title introductions. Uh, that they do it makes it look like a big deal. I'm not sure about the female announcer. I'm not hearing Finkel or Bruce Buffer or some stentorian authoritarian voice. Um, I honestly, from the time they got started with this, it just felt different. When when Tommaso was ducking and evading the bigger guy, 
I was kind of wincing along with it, like, oh shit, he almost got him. Ooh, ooh. Um, the first big chop from Walter, he sold it like a gunshot and it fucking popped. They actually did a an intelligent, different desk spot. Instead of just throwing one another through the desk, they put Walter's chop over by having him chop a fucking hole in the goddamn uh, thing that covers up the monitors or whatever, the top of the desk. Um, they had a great fight. There was a heel and a baby face. Everything was logical. It was a struggle. They never lost sight of a contest. It was obviously two serious men that, you know, if you were a guy, you think, well, I don't necessarily know. I want to fuck with these guys. And if you were a woman, you were like, hmm, adult men. I don't know if too many women were watching Volter. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, hey, I'll tell you what. I don't know. The heels, the heels didn't get as many women back in the day, but they got the more fun ones. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, they were uh, the heel women fans were a lot more fun. That's why the baby faces wore masks at the that's, hotel. Yeah, that's also why the baby faces were in a rotten mood most of the time. Uh, but anyway, um, they were making contact and they were working stiff, but it wasn't reckless or unprofessional at any point in time. Uh, neither guy did anything that they wouldn't do if they were really who they are supposed to be just because it would be a cool thing to do. Tommaso Ciampa didn't suddenly go, Hey, I can moonsault off the top rope out on the floor. And this guy's big enough to catch me because Tommaso Ciampa wouldn't do a fucking moonsault. They went back and forth in a believable way where you felt that the momentum was changing in a struggle instead of just guys trading the opportunity to do moves. It was well thought out, excellently executed. I watched the picture in picture because I didn't want to miss anything. You know what? I'm going to say that's my biggest complaint about this match. I didn't watch it on Peacock. I watched it on TV. The picture in picture looked awesome where he hit Walter, uh, Walter, excuse me, Yes. Whatever, 15 times in a row off the ropes, and he was yes. waiting for them to go down. That being in the picture in picture really pissed me off because if there was a crowd there, the crowd would have been going nuts. But I'm sure the fake fans were going really nuts. And I wish that would have been <laughs> full screen for that. But that that was that was the thing, is that and people are saying, well, now that sounds goofy. He hit him a million times with it. No. He kept running and hitting the ropes and clotheslining the big fucker. And Valter would sell, but he wouldn't go down. And he'd stagger and he'd register. And it just over and over again, he's drilling him, boom, boom, boom. And finally, he's coming off for the last one. And Valter hits one chop, boom. And fucking Champa takes the bump. And that's when he sits up and fires up. He didn't fire up after he got hit over the head with a baseball bat. He's pounding the fucking guy the guy gets one chop that levels him but he comes up and says no motherfucker it it, it, it tomaso had great facials Walter, what a worker what a beast he is with those hands um there was one point they made a mistake i will say i will just say this tomaso forgot something briefly and Walter went with that and Tommaso went with Walter going with that. And it was worked through so masterfully that I won't even say what it was because nobody else noticed it or I bet you they didn't notice it, but that was the only fucking thing I could find wrong with this thing. And then when Tommaso gave Walter his, his finish, I can't remember what he calls it, but Rico Constantino's old thing. Um, they both sold, it was off the top rope, which uh, obviously is a big deal, but they both sold it like fucking grim death. So it wasn't like just doing stupid moves off the top rope. Boom, they caught one, boom, and they sold it. And then um, uh, there was the, the spot where Tommaso bridged with Valter on top of him, which was amazing. And then Valter stomps the bad neck two power bombs gets a two count but then the big overhead suplex boom on on Tommaso's head and hits him with that big chop one two three I think Valter for his gimmick is one of the best in-ring workers that I've ever seen wow ever. he doesn't do anything that he shouldn't fucking do and everything looks good and he's 
He's got the way of laying hands on people that makes it violent instead of working without being dangerous. Anyway, I thought this was a masterpiece. I saved the DVR, and it was one of the best WWE matches of the modern era of the last few years of whatever the fuck it is they've been doing. What do you think? I wish he was the main eventer in NXT, not just NXT UK. If he was on every week, I wish I he was the main eventer at WrestleMania. Yeah, well, I don't wish that Vince McMahon would get anywhere near him because that <laughs> will mess things up. All of a sudden, it will be something goofy. Like, you know, oh, you're, uh, you're German. Why don't we just say you're French and you're like Jerry Lewis? Like, it'll just be something that doesn't need to be done. Why don't you wear some Lederhosen? <laughs> yeah, it will be bad. But this was great. My biggest complaint, like I said, was the picture-in-picture. Picture. I didn't want there to be any picture-in-picture picture for this, but when it actually hit, shit was really hot. I mean, to the point where I watched the picture-in-picture. Picture. That's how good it was. Love this. It should have been on last because you couldn't follow it. Yeah. 